are willing to work together on how to figure out how to tell us they love us so much. It's a big love fest. The relationship between Big Pharma and the publisher is perilous. Any industry with a global revenue of $600 billion can afford to buy quite a lot of adverts. And pharmaceutical companies also buy glossy, expensive reprints of the trials it feels flattered by. As we noted in the column two months ago, there is evidence that this money distorts editorial decisions. Really? Money distorts decisions. And Big Pharma and the media love us so much that they'll make us take drugs we don't need that are harmful. Hmm. We're going to come back. We're going to take your calls at the InfoWarrior with Jason Burmis, PrisonPlanet.tv, and InfoWars.com. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis as we continue to go to your calls. I also want to drop it that GM says it's going to move its headquarters from Detroit. I'm not sure if they're actually saying where, but it will no longer be in Detroit. Weird. The economy was so good three years ago when the Bush administration said we were popping. We were never in a recession. And now, you know, the entire auto industry is just going to leave the country and probably be bought up by foreign interests or be nationalized, and nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to notice. And uh, Max Kaiser had it right when he uh, said, you know, the American people really just don't have a spine anymore, or the auto workers would be screaming bloody murder and standing up for themselves. And I really do feel bad for them because I do feel like most of them don't feel like they do have any recourse. You know, he also made the point that if this had happened over in France, what they would have done is simply taken the foreman and strung him up and just held him hostage until they got what they wanted. And uh, if they did that in this country, it would be martial law and they'd send in, you know, people with black ski masks to kill them. So, you know, it, it, they are a little beyond reproach. Uh, Max Kaiser giving a great analysis there. We played it on the show a few nights ago. All right, let's continue to go to your calls. Lewis in Texas, you're on the air. Thanks, Jason, for having me on. Uh, you got it. Well, like, I have, uh, I have something to tell you that happened in my school. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to be a senior. Mm -hmm. And I tell every, well, I tell a lot of people about, you know, what's going on. And some of them are just shocked. You know, they just, they just can't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, because, uh, you know, like a lot of our teens here, you know, they're just involved in just, you know, what they want to do, what's on TV, what are we going to do next week. No, they I understand. No the real world is still very big, and so is the Road Rules Challenge. And now, you know, everybody loves everybody on uh, VH1. There's a ton of trash TV over there, and we can't miss the keeping up with the Kardashians and the Playboy Bunnies. I understand. A lot of people have a lot of things to do in high school. They don't want to listen to the truth. They don't want to get involved with society. Continue. Right. And uh, I have this... Uh Thing that happened to us at the beginning of the year, um, and I don't know if, if y'all have heard about this, but at our school, they did almost like um, an emergency, almost as if uh, so, like if some sort of disease were to break out. Yeah, they no, one of these weird emergency drills where they take you to an off-site center and give you a mock vaccination, right? Right, yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly yeah. it. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, it's been going on for years. I remember when I was... You know, washing dishes and making pizzas over at Repepe's. Big shout out to Repepe's in St. Johnsville. I overhear uh, the wife of the guy that runs it, you know, talking about how her kids just did this drill. And the dr the kids, to her, sounded distressed. And she told them to calm down. This is something that you're going to need to do maybe in your lifetime. And what they did is they bust him over to the uh, local police station, which is about 20 miles out where there would be your FEMA center. OK. And then as they each got off the bus, they gave them a mock vaccination and then they put them into different groups and took them away to different places. And she thought that this was a good thing. And I said, do you realize what they, they just did? They just trained your children in the case of an emergency to leave right. school with government authorities, take a vaccine and go to an undisclosed location all without you knowing. I'm like, are you out of your mind? But that was back in the day when Jason Burmas was a nutball by everybody's standards. Nobody wanted to listen to the pizza guy. You know, meanwhile, they have just extended the program and really brought it federal. It's it's a federal. I mean, I you know, they try to make the excuse. Oh, well, we're in New York. You know, the terrorism happened here. No, it didn't. That was a government black op. People well, the black ops programs don't exist, Jason. The, you know, Wired can just report they're getting an additional 50 billion in funding. But black ops programs don't exist. There is no shadow government. I'm making it all up. You got anything else for me quick, Lewis? Um, um, yeah, I was going to ask you about, uh, uh, Bohemian Grove, are there any new, I mean, because I've been listening to you and... I've any new developments stuff. on the Grove? We'll come back and talk about it on the other side. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis, prisonplanet.tv, infowars.com. All right, what other stories have I not been able to go through here? I know there's a couple of them, and then we're going to go right back to your calls. 
We just reported on Merck. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that woman, that Jacqueline Smith woman, she's talking about these identification cards, same person who banned 16 people from the UK. Well, what they don't want to report on is that the majority of British airline pilots, or the BALPA organization, which represents more than 80% of commercial airline pilots, does not want the identification card, do not want to be compulsory guinea pigs for this national ID card scheme. ID cards will have absolutely no value as far as security is concerned. This is nothing other than a coercion and promises that ID cards would be voluntary have been broken. Jim McAlson, BALPA General Secretary, has told the ministers, we will resist. And God bless those people for resisting. Do not bow down. Do not serve your masters. Do not force yourself into servitude by taking this identification card. Fight it tooth and nail. I thank you, sir, for standing up for what is right. Jerry in Alberta, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes. Hi, Jason. How are you today? Good. Um, I, was, I was kind of uh, listening to you talk earlier about how there's a new law being passed in Alberta, the bar law. Yeah, that is um, the uh, bill number 42 where they want bar owners to be able to take all your identification if you go in and then they can sell it off to whoever they want and then it is integrated in this police system where the police can now just come in and take you out of the bar hook line and sinker for nothing it doesn't matter okay and you said the MLA in charge of that was Rob Anderson this is true yeah well I drywalled his basement about uh, a month and a half ago mm -hmm. so I was in his basement every day for a month and uh, I just want you to know that I blasted InfoWars every day for a month in his basement. <laughs> and I want you to also know that he received the Obama deception, loose change, terror storm, and game. I've had oh. lengthy discussion. He tried firing me. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to know what's funny, too? The electrician mm -hmm. before me was there for about two weeks uh, prior to me, and he's mm -hmm. the one who actually helped me get the job, and he blasted InfoWars every day for two weeks in his basement too well the guy's obviously aware of what he's doing i mean you don't you don't propose bill 42 without knowing that this is a police state draconian measure which further integrates this system of complete control and you have no no personal privacy anymore you're not securing your persons you're not securing your properties all because we have to fight crime and terror i thank you for the call sir Can let's jump well, uh, yeah go ahead you're still on the line go ahead okay. jerry yeah, um, there was a martial law drill in Millerville, which is southwest of Calgary, in January. There was also a martial law drill in um, Calgary about a m less than a month ago, and there's one in Medicine Hat. And at the same time, I talked to a city planner, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you know how Calgary is designed, but all the all the communities are gated in. They're gated communities with okay. one or two entrances in. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a city planner. And the city planner said that the reason that they're gated like this is so that if there was a pandemic or martial law, they can contain us uh, within our communities. Yeah, it's called a makeshift FEMA center. You know, I mean, and people don't understand. They will understand after this NLE09 exercise when they make these centers. But that's the whole thing. They will use military facilities. They will use hospitals. They will use sporting arenas. They will use apartment complexes. They will use whatever is necessary to put down the populace in the case of an insurrection. I thank you for the call, sir. Let's go to Casey in Georgia. Or, I'm sorry, Carrie in Georgia. You're on the line. Hey, it's Carrie, but uh, I wanted to call. Uh, I'm on the YouTube channel now, and uh, I'm looking at the most viewed, and I see that uh, uh, Fire Dog Lake is uh, number four, and and they support the you know right left paradigm, and they have all the copyrighted uh, news stories on theirs, and uh, you don't you don't see anybody taking them down. Mm -hmm. And and I just uh, I just wonder if there's uh, you know maybe a way we can. Uh, demand that uh, all channels that, because uh, didn't they claim Alex was violating some sort of copyright? And that's why yeah, they, they tried to claim that with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, but then I listened to Douglas talk to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. They said, hey, we didn't file a complaint. He was on the phone with Google and YouTube. They're just like, no, we're not going to do anything. And it was had nothing to do with any copyright infringement with my site today. They just said, you know what? You're off the air. We're done. There's no, they just don't yeah. want our information out there. I didn't right. do anything. Listen, listen. 
it's flooding into us, all these other YouTube channels. And, and so Nate Evans had a director's channel that he said we could use. And I hadn't talked to Nate Evans, a great We Are Changer out of New York. He, he does a lot of the animations for big TV shows. And uh, he now is in L.A. So I said, call Nate. You know, he'd given us the code to that director's channel he's had since, like, you know, right when YouTube started, like in late 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. right. you know, way, way before it was, uh, 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 you know, Google bought it in 2007. And I call him up because we put in the code for it, and it said disabled. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I should have called and bitched to you, but I didn't. A few months ago, I decided to get out.